Hi and welcome to the program today. My name is Kojo Imadi. Thank you for watching. Uh, today I want to start a, a, a discussion here. Well, but this thought we've been speaking about this over the last two weeks. And this has to do with God's pattern, right? His method uh, for man in order for man to be able to experience, all right, his kingdom, which is the supernatural workings of God within the life of that person. Uh, man is surrounded today in our environment by so many pressing needs where it comes to uh, needs that have to do with the work of people and their families, security, uh, whatever it is. As they begin to go into the end times, there will be more pressure that will come on the outside. And with that, there's more opportunities being created for God to reveal himself in his living power as the true and living God through man. So in that sense, right, as the needs begin to increase on the outside, instead of saying there's a casting down, truly one should be saying there's a lifting up because it gives God the opportunity to start revealing himself in greater dimensions from within. For where sin abounded, grace did much more abound, right? And so it gives God that opportunity there. For man has never discovered God through wisdom, neither has man discovered God by philosophy or through his intellect. Needs have been God's way of revealing himself. You see, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. But the needs now create the opportunity for him to be able to express through us uh, the portion of that blessing that is required at that particular moment upon the earth. When God wants to reveal an aspect of his being to the world, right, the pressure that comes upon the earth gives him that opportunity. And so his people should press in and from the blessings they already have in Christ Jesus, through the supply of the spirit of Jesus in answer to prayer, there is the knowledge of the things that have been freely given. And then as they act in faith, there's an expression of those things within their life. So when the pressure comes on, people receive a supply of the Spirit. The Spirit will teach, the Spirit will guide, the Spirit will show the things of Jesus Christ that have been freely given. And then he reveals the deep things of God. And as people begin to walk in those things that he has revealed, there will be a manifestation of those things within the lives of the people. And through that, there will be, people will be drawn to God. And then the society also will be caught up into the glorious liberty of those people. And there will be a lifting of the society from that level of darkness into some form of light. So before we have what we will call, all right, the opening of the heavens over an entire society, individuals must have, must experience in their own micro units an open heaven which means darkness covers the earth, gross darkness the people, but the light of God is seen upon individuals. And then Gentiles come into that light, and then kings come into the brightness of their rising, and that light now spreads. So it's from the micro to the macro. From an individual, it's now spread to the whole. And that's God's pattern of salvation there. Raises men, and men transform, all right, the world. So it's important that we understand that People need to see a God in his living power at work. People have got to have what is called the expression of living faith. Because faith can be there and it can be in its dormant or dead form. James spoke about that. He said, oh you vain man, don't you know that faith without works is dead, being alone. So the faith was there, it was right there. But the Bible says it was dead, which means dormant, inactive inoperative no profit was seen from the faith no expression was seen from that faith it said because something else was not added to that faith in order for it to produce results so you can have people that know clearly they have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places that god will never leave nor forsake them their ever present help in a time of need but something has to be added to that faith to that conviction in order for it not just to be dormant for it not just to be that way, for there to be an expression of that faith, for people to be able to see that faith, for proof to be produced of that particular faith within the hearts of people. I want to speak about that method as God has shown within the scriptures. There is a way in God that produces miracles. There is a method in the spirit that brings about results. Ecclesiastes Solomon spoke about this. 
He said, you, know not, you do not know the way, as you don't know the way of the Spirit, nor how bones do grow in the womb of she that is with child. It says, neither do you know the works of God that maketh all. So the works of God there are the, is called the way of the Spirit. There is a way in which the Spirit operates in order to produce works upon the earth. Right? There is a way in which he does his particular thing. It's called the way of of the spirit in order to produce uh, the works of god uh, within the life of a person so we've got to understand the way of the spirit such that when we say it's not by power or by might but by the spirit we are saying we didn't do it by power or by might but through this way uh, you get that that is there's a way we understand when we want to produce results so let's give this here a person says well i'm seeking for a job well, this is the way in which you get it, and the Spirit will produce the job for you. Follow this way, and you get the job here. Someone says, my business has stagnated. There is a way of the Spirit to begin to bring about an increase and to change what's happening in the life of that person. Someone says, well, my marriage is collapsing. We worked out on ourselves. There is a way of the Spirit. And he says, that method of the Spirit is the same method that consider the ladies how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. He says, no struggle there. The ladies just evolve. He says, with one thought, right, could you or with, could you add one cubit to your stature by worrying and anxiety? That it's the way of the spirit that allowed the bones, right, to grow in the womb of she that is with child. It's that same way of the spirit that you see the lilies growing without toiling and spinning and there's no struggle planted on one spot and they just evolve effortlessly. Is that called the way of the Spirit? This way of the Spirit is what Isaiah referred to in chapter 30 when he spoke about the fact that people go down to Egypt for help and they take counsel. And God said they didn't come, all right, to me for counsel. And we've said this that the most important thing to God as regards his dealings with man is that man must make God his only source of total supply. If a man wants to please God, the first step he must take is to consecrate himself and say, God alone will be my source of total supply. Now there will be channels. He will use men. Some I will know, some I won't know. He will choose the way in which he will bless me in terms of the channels that he will use. But the principal source and the only person that I will bow down and worship for the fulfillment of anything within my life will be my God and my creator, right? That is what Abraham said. I have lifted up my hands to the possessor of the heavens and the earth that I recognize that any man who is alive is alive based on the breath of this person, that the whole world, all the nations, as a drop of water in his palms that we are dealing with the possessor, the creator of the heavens and the earth, who brought about the heavens like a man will open a curtain. That's the way he brought out all the galaxies and that. Such enormous power that he wants to pour forth to us words that are in Christ Jesus. So the first thing is that you make God your source of total supply, which means God is my source. I start with God. God is the one who will be responsible for producing. The Bible says a man can receive nothing except it be given to him from heaven. So he recognizes that heaven must be the one that will give and grant this particular thing unto me. And when you make God your source and your only source of total supply, you understand that he will use instruments, right? He could use one person. He could use... Uh, community could use different people to bless you right but he is your source of total supply that's why he told the nation of Israel at one point he said even if a prophet arises and does a sign or a wonder in your midst and prophesies and the thing even comes to pass and the man now tells you to let us go and serve other gods he said it is a test right that what I did to you was simply a test right to see whether your heart will be with me that you will desist from that path and desist from that person, right? No matter the manifestation the person has, if the person is going to change your source from God that you know to other things that are around you. 
So this is so important, right? The eyes of the Lord are going to and fro the entire earth, seeking whom, right, whose heart is perfect towards him, that he might show himself strong. God yearns in his being to manifest his power through humanity, and his eyes are going round, looking for that person whose heart is perfect towards him. And he says he will manifest himself through that individual. Now, what exactly is God looking for when his eyes are going throughout the entire earth? Jesus gave us a clue because Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you've seen me say something, it's the Father that has said it. If you've seen me do something, it's the Father that has done it in me. If you understand me, then you understand the Father and God. And he said, at the beginning of his ministry, he said, were there not many widows in Israel? Why was it the widow at Zarephath that Elijah was sent to? That you want to know how God chooses whom he is going to bless. You want to know who qualifies to have that supply coming out of heaven. He said, understand, widows are very important to God. How come he only moved Elijah towards one widow? What condition did the woman satisfy that drew the power of God right, right into her life? i give you a second story here. When Jesus was going and he called Peter into ministry, the Bible says Jesus stood on the shore and saw two empty boats, not one. And he decided he was going to enter into the boat of Peter. Why was it Peter's boat he chose and not the other boat that was on site? There must have been something about Peter that Jesus said, I can walk through and walk with Peter. Right? He was mantled all night and caught nothing. Somebody that could have been frustrated at that point. Somebody that at that point you are mending your nets. You are frustrated all night you have walked. And then some strange fellow starts walking down the beach. And then gets into your boat and then asks you in that time of need, pressing need there, where you have nothing that you're going to go home with. And he says, can you push me a little into the shore there? Lend me your boat. That would be the last thing anybody wants to do emotionally at that point in time. To start pushing an unknown individual to you as far as you're concerned now. Right now to the sea because he says he wants to speak to the multitude of people. And he surrendered that boat there to Jesus. And it's that attitude that Jesus is looking for in people that begins to open the supply of heaven to that individual. Same thing with the widow at Zarephath. This was a woman that had come to her end. This was probably going to be her last meal. And somebody walks up and says, could you help me with that meal? And she was willing to risk that. You could see something about it, that these people in their hour of need, they turned away from themselves and turned towards people who were in need on the outside and decided to help them. That is what will draw the power of God into your life. Listen. If you are in a time of need now, say, well, I'm looking for a job, I'm frustrated, I don't have enough money. If you can turn away from yourself and start turning towards other people that are in need, genuine need now, that you recognize within your environment. And these are things that will come to you that will knock on your door, that you will see by yourself, right? That you will recognize that there is a need that somebody has. If you keep focusing on yourself and keep focusing, I will explain this on my own need, on my own need, on when is God, then the power of God doesn't begin to come into operation in the life of that particular person. You must remember that when they try to cast out devils, Jesus Christ, they tried to cast out devils and they couldn't, his disciples. They came to Jesus and they asked him, said, Master, because Jesus got there and said, how long will I be with you, faithless and perverse generation, and cast the devil out? Then they came to meet him and said, Master, how come we couldn't cast this devil out? We spoke to the devil. We did what you did. How come the devil didn't come out? And Jesus said something very powerful. He said, verily I say unto you. Now, can you imagine Jesus looking at you and saying, truly I say unto you. When he used the word verily, it means, I'm listen, truly I say unto you. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, he said, forget about even this devil. He said, you will say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. And he said, nothing shall be impossible unto you. He now added something. 
He said, but this kind cometh not except by praying and fasting, which means a person who takes this principle and mixes it with praying and fasting, he said there is nothing that can stop that person from anything on the earth. That a person who practices this and in, puts in fasting and prayer in the practice of this faith principle, and this is one of the things that faith people have dropped, okay? Now on Saturday, we'll be doing School of Ministry, we'll get back to this. The truth about the matter is that the healing and the faith revival that happened on the earth from 1947 was preceded by clear teachings on praying and fasting and it is on record that Gordon Lindsay, T.L. Osborne, Oral Roberts wrote letters testifying to the fact in 1947 and 1948 and another leading prophet, and I'll mention his name, wrote the fact that they had spent extended times there in fasting that gave birth to the healing revival and what you call the voice of healing that eventually from 40s there led to faith and healing and then the charismatic movement began to come in. So bringing fasting into this principle here explodes everything there. The power of God comes into operation. Now, but he said if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. Now, you say, well, why did he say faith as a grain of mustard seed? Well, you, you could say, well, if you have faith, just very small faith, because a grain of mustard seed was the smallest seed back then in Israel. So if you could just have just very little faith, that it's because you don't have that faith. Little, right? If you had it, you move this mountain. Suppose that's struggling. I don't have faith as much as... No, that's not what he was saying. He said if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, he said you will say to this mountain. Now, what was he referring to? If you read Mark 4, 26, right down to about 32, it says that the kingdom of God is as if a man will cast seed into the ground. And that man will sleep and he will rise. And the seed will spring forth and grow. He knoweth not how. Which means this is how the kingdom, the kingdom means the resources of God, the will of God, his, his resources, his kingdom. This is how it begins to function in the life of a man. That that man will cast seed into the ground. That's why I said the places where God goes are the places that because how he starts his operations is by ministering seed to the sower. Which means he says, I'm looking for somebody who they might have their need, but are willing to look to somebody else who is in need there. They're, they're willing to help people, right, even though they're in a position of need. That's how we start this process here. He says, as if a man will cast seed, once he does that, he says, then it will spring forth and grow. That seed, he will not be able to explain. Things will begin to happen in the life of that person he will not be able to explain. When you cannot explain it, God is at work. He says, it will spring forth and grow. He knoweth not how. He says, for the earth by itself will bring forth. First the blade. He says, then after that, air, then God the full corn in the air, and then he says, the harvest will come. Then the next portion of scripture now says, the kingdom of God is as a grain of mustard seed. He said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, he said, it's like a grain of mustard seed, which is smaller than all the seeds that are in the earth. So, it says, in terms of size, it's the smallest says, but here is the key. But when it is sown, it becometh greater than all the herbs. Then after it becomes greater, it will shoot forth its branches. And then the fowls of the air will stay under it. So we have two levels here. First it becomes greater, then shoots out its branches. But it tells us that a grain of mustard seed, if you just hold it this way, and it is not planted, it is smaller than it, ineffective. But the minute you plant it, it says the power gets released. So he was saying that if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed here, if you understand it, that your faith can be small. The level of your conviction about something in your future can be small. But once you understand how to plant that faith into the earth, it leaves your heart and gets into the earth. He says the earth will begin to produce events that you will not be able to explain. And you will know, first the blade, you will see that that thing that you had in your heart once as a dream, 
something has come up that is now the blade. It's not the full thing, but your career starts going in that direction. Your business begins to get in that direction. Suddenly, a door is opened up for you. You went for a meeting. You met somebody. You met somebody you could see. They imagine. The situation begins to emerge. But it's because you treated your faith as a grain of mustard seed, which meant you planted the faith. And it was after you planted the faith that you started speaking to the mountain. He says, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed and you sow it, then you can start speaking to that mountain and nothing shall be impossible to you. The problem is that people are holding that faith in its dormant form and are speaking from that point without planting that faith into the earth. So the ability that is contained in that faith is not being released. And the way you plant that faith the Bible says that God cannot be mocked in Galatians. Whatsoever a man sows, that also shall he reap. He that sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that sows to the spirit shall of the spirit reap. So you are sowing to the spirit now. That's the way you do it by faith. That's how you plant your faith. It says, therefore, as we have opportunity, we should do good unto all men, especially those who are of the household of faith, that if you continue in well-doing, you shall reap. So that's the way you plant your faith. Well doing. It takes faith for a person who is in need, who has a mountain before him, to focus on helping somebody else in his trust. That God, you are my source here. And therefore, I will take out of what I need to help somebody. And that opens up the door for the confession of God's word and his promises that created that faith inside your heart to start bringing about living power within your life to change and transform things. This done in an atmosphere of praying and fasting will break the hold of any impossible situation within your life. We've got to stop here because of time. Thank you for watching once again. You can connect with me on Twitter at Pastor Koju. God bless you and have a wonderful week in His presence. Thank you for watching.